one. I'll be talking about the competition details for the upcoming competition, which features the Cabernet Sauvignon meta. And I'll also be showcasing my no NFT Cabernet Sauvignon build, which will hopefully give you some ideas or help you out for this upcoming competition. Now, I might be pronouncing it incorrectly, uh, or sometimes I'll just say Cabernet wine. I'm pretty sure you'll know what I'm talking about once I show you. So Talonstar has posted all the information for this competition in the Galley Games Discord on the Talonstar announcements. I'm just going to go over some of that. So the next competition starts on June 13, 2023 at 12 p.m. Central Time, but you can check what the time is in your time zone by checking the announcements. The competition is going to go on for three days now. Uh, moving forward, that's how it's going to work. That way the competitions can end on Friday. And that gives the team enough time to put the next meta out the same day, uh, fix any issues that may have come out when the meta goes live. And it also allows them to get the rewards for the competition that just ended out the same day as well. So they'll be able to do everything much faster this way. And it also gives us four days to actually practice for the next competition. So overall, it's a good thing in my opinion. Uh, the meta is going to be Cabernet Sauvignon, so it has been boosted in stars. It's going to give 11,500 stars. The cash is going to re uh, remain the same. Wool has been cash boosted for this meta, so it's going to give 10,000 cash instead of its standard 3,750 cash. So almost three times as much cash, so I highly recommend you set up a wool rush. Uh, it's going to help you get all the money that you need to afford this build. Now the biomes, you can see them on the screen, but the biome is going to be an east layout forest with an oil seep and you want to take advantage of that oil seep as it's going to give you up to four passive crude oil and that'll help you craft petroleum and energy without needing any oil pumps. Now there's going to be some biomes on the edges. On the north side you have a river. East has a forest, south has a mountain, and the west has a desert. And these biomes are going to play an important part to helping you get your build uh, more efficient. And I'll explain how they help me in my build in a moment. Uh, reward structures are the same. Top 1200 wins Gala and an NFT. The better you rank, the more gala you will get and possibly the higher rarity NFT you will get as well. The NFT reward for this competition is the Glinting Savine's Ghost card, which reduces the craft time for the Cabernet Vines to give you uh, Cabernet Grapes. So now I'm going to go into uh, my no NFT build right here for the Cabernet Savignan. Um, I'll just start off by rotating it so you can see it from all directions. And I'll also display the stats on the right side. So this build, it does pretty well. It's doing 78 Cabernet Sauvignon per hour. Very close to 79 now at this point. And I have been running it for a few hours, so it's pretty good rates. Um, it's not perfect, but yeah, it does pretty good. And I believe this is already a good enough build to get people into top 1200. But I always uh, encourage you to improve it as much as possible. Even if that means uh, plugging in your own NFTs or moving things around to make it more efficient, you always want to find a way to improve it further. But I'm just going to go ahead and explain how this build works for me. And I'm going to start from the top. So I have eight wineries crafting Cabernet Sauvignon. It requires five grapes, one wine bottle and one oak barrel in order to craft. So the grapes, specifically the Cabernet grapes are crafted in the Cabernet vines, which I have 52 of them. They require two water and one wood. Uh, I take advantage of the river to provide me with all the water that I need, not just for the Cabernet vines, but also for the trees and the oak trees. Uh, so water really isn't an issue for the grapes. It's very easy to build a two water requirement. The tricky part is the wood. Um, so the vines need one wood and it's not like your other things like livestock where the lumberjacks just take the wood to them. No. 
the lumberjacks and the loggers will not take the wood to the crops you're gonna need your tractor to do that now the tractor or the farmer but preferably the tractor because they move faster they have to go to the lumber yard pick up wood and take it to the vines then when the vines are finished growing they'll pick them up and take them to the silo so this is very important you do need to balance both your lumber and your wood because both of them will be used for this build if they're not balanced you won't be able to make cabernet sauvignon so you gotta make sure they're balanced and it's hard to perfectly balance them it is possible but it is very hard this build does not perfectly balance lumber and wood I actually overproduce lumber because it's easier to produce one of the things than to perfectly balance them, at least in my opinion. But uh, that, that's it for the grapes, so let me move on and explain the wine bottles. Wine bottles are crafted in the glass factories, which I have three of them. They require three silica, one limestone, one chromium. Uh, silica is crafted in the sand mines, which I have three of. Now the sand mines craft silica faster if they have passive sand or passive sandy which in the proximity effect indicator you can see right here this is referred to as sand or sandy um, the way you get this is either having a desert biome which in in this case we don't have a desert biome we were given a forest but we were given a desert biome edge so the edge of a desert biome or even an ocean edge will give three passive uh, sandy but you have to be right next to the edge so in this case you want your sand mines right next to that desert edge that'll allow you to craft silica at 30 seconds which is the fastest craft time if you don't have your sand mines close enough uh, to the desert edge for the passive sandy then it's going to take somewhere around three minutes to craft silica and it, that is not efficient so yeah you absolutely do need to have it close to that desert now it does uh, require two energy in order to craft silica, but you just want to have a power plant nearby to provide the passive energy in order to craft it. So that shouldn't be a big deal. The silica is picked up by the industrial worker or the forklift, which is faster. It's taken to the warehouse and you know, the glass factory picks everything up from the warehouse and then it also deposits the wine bottles in the warehouse. Limestone and chromium comes from the mines. And I have a total of 13 iron mines here. You can use either iron mines or shallow mines, but since we're given a mountain, it's highly recommended that you use the iron mines because they craft the minerals faster. Whereas the shallow mines, you don't use a mountain for them. You can have them on an open world edge, but they craft much slower. So in this case, I have 13 iron mines. The first two are crafting iron. The next 10 alternate between limestone and chromium, so I have 5 making limestone, 5 making chromium, and the last one also makes iron, which means I have 3 iron mines making iron. Now they all require lumber, energy, and water drum. Limestone and chromium actually requires more energy and water drum. For the energy, you just want to make sure it's all passive, so you want to have enough power plants uh, to do that. The water drums, you just want to manually craft them using water facilities. So I have seven water facilities doing that. And the lumber, you want to craft it on your lumber mills. So I have three lumber mills crafting lumber. And I'm actually overproducing lumber. So if I ever hit 30 lumber, it's going to auto sell the lumber and go down to 20. Um, I do have two lumber yards in this setup. Most of my lumber should be going to this lumber yard, which is closer to the mines. And that would allow this other lumber yard to uh, store the excess wood that's going to be used for the Cabernet grapes. So that explains the minerals needed for wine bottles. Now the last thing here is the oak barrels. Oak barrels are made in these three lumber mills right here. They require three oak wood, one iron, one energy. The energy you just want to pass from the power plants. The iron is crafted from the iron mines. And the oak wood is gotten from these nine oak trees over here. Gives uh, all the oak wood that I need at least to hit 80 oak barrels anyways. Um, if I wanted to improve this rate beyond 78 Cabernet, 
the wine per hour. I would need more oak wood for more oak barrels, but I would mostly need more Cabernet grapes. That's the thing holding me down. Wine bottles is almost at 100 per hour, so I'm not, I'm not having any issues there. Uh, it's mostly just the Cabernet grapes. Uh, they take up so much space, as you can see. And also, if I found some way to perfectly balance the lumber and the wood, this would be more efficient. But I'll just leave it at that. Uh, that pretty much explains all the crafting buildings. I'll quickly go over these other buildings and stuff I haven't explained. Uh, I'm using 25 tree farms for all the wood and lumber. I have a total of 13 loggers and 12 tractors. I'm, I'm sure those numbers can be messed around with. Uh, one storehouse to store the Cabernet Sauvignon. So of course you do need that. And preferably you want the storehouse close to the wineries. The silo that stores the grapes, you do want that as close to the wineries as possible and also not too far from the uh, grapevines. You also don't want to cast any shade on any of the trees or grapevines. You want them to be crafting at the fastest craft time possible. So power plants, I have a total of seven power plants. Uh, seems like a lot, but it gets the job done. Standard industrial setup over here with the two water pumps and the refinery in between those two, crafting gasoline. Refinery to the side, crafting petroleum. That's closer to the oil seep. That way it has the passive crude oil. And at least one of the power plants has the passive crude oil in case I do need to craft energy, which you would for all the buildings that you craft. It really saves a lot of time and effort. The one fuel storage across the refinery crafting gasoline to store your gasoline in and your petroleum. And other than that, uh, I have two more water pumps over here. That's just to fill the requirement needed to place down the power plants. A total of three warehouses. Uh, this is to store all the other items and make sure that nothing gets jammed. Uh, Cause you could do it with two, but in my opinion, it's better to do three. It's safer that way. Just to avoid any um, jamming of items. Trade depots at the bottom left and the builder houses at the bottom right. Uh, since you can't really put anything else in this corner and you really don't need two trade depots uh, one already sells quick enough so that should be all the buildings explained auto sell i mean pretty much put everything on auto sell except gasoline you don't need to put that uh, lumber i have it at a sell at amount of 30 uh could be 20 i suppose uh, but 30 will do. You, you always want to ma uh, make sure you have at least some lumber for your uh, mines to pick up. But yeah, that's uh, I I did forget to put limestone, but there we go. Put some limestone in there as well. You, you want to make sure everything's on auto sell, except the grapes. I suppose you don't need to auto sell the grapes because even if your silo jams, um, it's fine. I mean, if your silo jams, you probably need another winery. <laughs> But um, yeah, that, sh that shouldn't be an issue, but everything else should be on auto sell. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, so hopefully this helped you out in some way. Consider liking the video, leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions about the build. And consider subscribing if you haven't done so, so you don't miss out on any of my helpful content like this. I appreciate your support and thanks for watching.